In this video, I will show you how to make a fall detector with a micro bit. This is a tiny programmable electronic device that can automatically detect when someone falls down and sound an alarm or send an alert to someone. Now, if you're familiar with our channel, this might be the first time you've seen a micro bit. You might know that we have a lot of Arduino projects and an Arduino is also a programmable electronic device where you can use jumper wires to connect it to an external circuit with things like sensors and motors built on a breadboard. And there's a lot of stuff you can do with an Arduino. The micro bit is a little different because it has a lot of built-in sensors and things like a speaker directly on the board. So it's a little easier to get started using a micro bit without having to worry about building that external circuit and things like how a breadboard works and if you put wires in the right place. So if you've tried Arduino before or been a little intimidated by building the circuit, then micro bit might be a better place to start. In this project, we are specifically going to be making use of a sensor called an accelerometer, which is this really tiny little thing on the back of the board that we can see labeled here. And an accelerometer is the same thing used in video game controllers for things like motion control or in your smartphone so your phone can automatically rotate the screen when you rotate your phone from vertical to horizontal. And we're not going to get too much into the physics of how an accelerometer works in this video. That's really a topic for another video. We can put a link to one in the description. We're just going to talk about what it can do. And an accelerometer really lets you do two things. It lets you detect motion, so something like shaking or moving or being dropped. So for example, I have these little lights called LEDs on the front of the micro bit programmed to flash if I shake the micro bit. So if I shake it like this, the accelerometer detects that shaking and it flashes the LEDs. An accelerometer can also detect which way gravity is pointing, and that helps you figure out which way is up and which way is down. It also lets you measure the angle of how far the micro bit is tilted. So you see I also have the LEDs programmed here to light up the center LED when the micro bit is laying flat, but then to move the LED that is lit up around as I tilt it in different directions. The micro bit can measure two angles of rotation called pitch and roll. And I will put a graphic up in the corner of the screen here to help you remember the direction and the signs. So which way is positive and which way is negative for these angles. But I will also demonstrate it here by moving the micro bit around. So when the micro bit is laying flat on a table, the pitch and roll angles are both zero degrees. As you tip it forward towards you, so this is assuming you have the connectors, this bottom edge facing you, and this logo up at the top. If you tip it up forward towards you, that is increasing the pitch angle until it is standing on edge like this. That is a pitch angle of 90 degrees. And if you keep going over until it is facing all the way down, that is a pitch angle of positive 180 degrees. If you go the other way, so again, resetting here where the pitch angle is zero and go backwards. So standing it up on the top edge where the logo is, then this is going to be a pitch angle of negative 90 degrees. And if you keep going all the way over this, that is an angle of negative 180 degrees. Roll is very similar, except it is side to side motion. So again, holding the micro bit facing you like this with the logo at the top and the connectors at the bottom, the roll angle is zero. If you tilt it to your right, then roll increases. It is a positive number. So up on the right edge, that is a roll angle of 90 degrees. If you go all the way over like this, then that is a roll angle of positive 180 degrees. If we reset it zero, tilt up on the left edge, that is a roll angle of negative 90 degrees. And if you go all the way over like this, that is negative 180 degrees. Now you might ask what happens if I go past 180 degrees and the answer is that the angle wraps around. It does not keep going past 180. So for example, for roll, if I go all the way over like this, that is positive 180 degrees. If I continue to rotate in that direction, the angle does not keep increasing. It doesn't go up to 181 and then 182 degrees. It will wrap back around to negative 180 degrees and then keep going. For example, here, this will be negative 90 degrees. So it doesn't become 
positive 270 degrees. You don't keep adding angle again. The range for both of the angles is between negative 180 and a positive 180. You'll never get a value outside of that range, even if you do multiple continuous rotations. So you won't usually have to worry about that if it's something for like this project where a person is wearing a micro bit and walking around, it's probably going to stay within a certain range and not do multiple rotations as long as the person isn't doing flips or something. But if you do have an application where for some reason the micro bit might be going through multiple complete rotations, then you would have to keep track of that. We're not really gonna worry about it in this project. Going back to the original example program here with the smiley and frowny faces, now that we have talked about the pitch and roll angles, we can understand a little more about what this program is doing. So it has a condition or an if statement in the code, which we will look at in a minute, that is comparing the measured pitch angle to a threshold. And as long as that angle is within a certain range, it will display a smiley face but if the pitch angle goes outside of that range, it will display a frowny face indicating that it has fallen over. So remember that the pitch angle when the micro bit is vertical like this is 90 degrees. And as I tip farther back this way, eventually when I get flat, it will be zero degrees. So I have a threshold set that when the pitch angle gets smaller than a certain angle, we consider that horizontal and we switch to the smiley face. I also have it to detect when it tips forward, but it's kind of hard to see that on camera here since the LEDs are facing down. So as I continue to tip forward past 90 degrees, the pitch angle is going to continue increasing. So 100, 110, 120 degrees and so on. And then once the angle gets bigger than a certain threshold, then we're also gonna to switch to the frowny face. But again, you can't see that on the camera here. Let's switch over to the computer and take a look at the code. Here we have the programming interface for the micro bit called Microsoft Make Code. If you have ever used another graphical programming language like Scratch, then this should be pretty easy to pick up. Rather than writing lines of text in a text editor, you have a menu with different blocks of code that you can click and drag into the programming area and they will snap together with the other blocks and that is how you write your program. I am not going to do a full tutorial for the initial setup for this, but we will put links to Microsoft's instructions in the written instructions on our website, which is linked in the description of this video. So if this is your first time programming in an environment like this, they have some tutorials on their website that you can follow. I am going to jump right into explaining how the code for this project works. When you start a new make code program, you are going to have two main sections of the code. You have the on start block, which is code that's only going to happen once as soon as the program starts. And then you have the forever block, which is code that's going to just loop forever. So here you have things that you only want to happen once. And then here you have things that you want to keep happening all the time. In the on start block, I am setting values for two angles, and those are those threshold angles that I mentioned earlier. So you can create those by going here in the variables menu, click make a variable, enter the name for the variable you want, and your variable names will then show up here under the your variables list. You can set the initial value for one of those variables by dragging out this set variable to number block and snapping it into your on start block. You can see I've already done that here for my angle one and angle two variables. So you select the drop down menu, click the variable you want, and then type in the number you want. And the advantage of doing this is that if you want to change those angles, all you have to do is change the number here in this initial block. And then you can use these variables for other things later in your program. To delete a block, you can click it and just drag it back over here to the menu with this trash can icon. Next, inside my forever loop, I have another set variable block. So I am setting my pitch variable to the rotation pitch angle. And this block is under input. You have to go to more. And then there is a block for rotation where you can use the drop down to change this to either pitch or roll. So rather than 
setting it to a number that I enter, like I did with the angle variables here, I am setting the pitch variable to the pitch rotation measured by the micro bit. Next up, we have an if else statement, and this is really the key part of the program. You can find these under logic, where you have if or if else, we want an if else statement. And this says if true, then, and there's a blank space, else, and there's another blank space. So this code will do the first part if some condition is true, else if that condition is not true, it will do the second part. And in that condition, this might look a little intimidating at first, but we can just read it out. I am saying if my pitch angle is less than angle one, or if my pitch angle is greater than angle two. So remember what I showed you earlier, if the pitch angle starts at 90 degrees, and then I tip the micro bit backwards, eventually it became less than a certain angle. In this case, if it is less than 45 degrees, then we would wanna switch and show the frowny face. Or if I tipped it forward, so I started at 90 degrees and tip it forward, this is the part we couldn't really see on camera because the LEDs were facing down. But if the pitch angle starts at 90 and then becomes greater than what I have entered here, 135 degrees, then we are also going to show the frowny face. So there are actually two different conditions that could make me show the frowny face. If the pitch angle is less than 45 degrees, or if the pitch angle is greater than 135 degrees. All the blocks you need to do this are also under logic. So I already have this written out here, but I'll demonstrate how you would do the snapping. So you have your if else statement, you then have the or operator here. So this allows you to compare two different conditions and say if this one is true, or if this one is true, snap that into the if statement. Then you have your less than or greater than comparison operator, where you can use this drop down menu to change. You have equals, not equals, a bunch of different options here, like less than, less than, equal to, etc. Snap that into your or operator. Be a little careful with the snapping here. Sometimes when you're nesting things, the order of the blocks and how they're snapped can get a little weird. So there we go. I now have the structure for this. I have if some number is less than some other number, or some number is less than some other number. I'm gonna change that drop down to greater. And then you can drag your variables in to replace all of these zeros. So I'm just gonna do the first one as an example here. If pitch is less than angle one. So again, that was the steps you would take to recreate what you see here. The next thing you're going to do is fill in your actual actions or what you want to happen. And again, I am using these show LED blocks to just make a frowny face or a smiley face. And you can find those here under basic where you drag out this show LED block and then you click to show which LEDs you want it to light up. But there are tons of other things you can do with a micro bit. You can make it play sounds, you can make it play music, you can even follow tutorials to use radio communication to send messages to another micro bit. So for something like a fall detector, you could sound an audible alarm, or you could even send an alert message to another micro bit user. One more thing we'll briefly cover that can be useful is displaying the actual pitch and roll angles. And you can do that using the serial write numbers block, which is down here under advanced serial serial right numbers array of so drag that out and then fill in your pitch variable and i also created another variable for roll which i am setting to the roll rotation just like i did with pitch and you then have two options once you have downloaded this program to your micro bit assuming your micro bit is still connected to the computer with the usb cable you can go over here to show data device and this is going to show the data both as a graph and as a printout from your physical micro bit. So the first number here is my pitch angle and my second number here is my roll angle. So as I am moving my micro bit around, right now I am tipping it side to side, so changing the roll angle. So you can see how that roll number is changing and you can see how this kind of pinkish colored line up here on the graph is going up and down whereas the blue one is pretty steady. And then if I switch and tip the micro bit back and forth, 
instead of side to side, we see the blue line, which represents the pitch angle going up and down, while the roll angle is pretty steady. Same thing down here, we see the pitch number changing, while the roll number is not changing that much. You can also use the simulator that is built into your browser. So if we switch over to show data simulator here, and just moving your mouse around will simulate tipping the micro bits. So we can see, remember the sign conventions I talked about earlier in the video, when the micro bit is flat, the roll and pitch angles are going to be zero. As I move my mouse up and tip it away from me, that is going to be a negative change in the pitch angle. So you can see the pitch angle getting negative down there in the monitor. You can see that some weird things happen when you get to the extremes, right at the edges when it's tilted 90 degrees, the roll angle also goes a little crazy there. But with just small changes around that flat position, we see pitch go negative as I go backward. Pitch is positive as I come forward and then roll is positive. As I go to the right, we see the roll angle increasing and roll is negative as I go to the left. So remember that this is just a very simple demonstration of one thing you can do with a micro bit, using that pitch angle measured by the accelerometer to detect pitch and control the LEDs. There are plenty of other inputs you can use. So there are two buttons you could program to have different features. You can use different motion detection features of the accelerometer to detect something like falling or the impact from hitting the ground. You could detect if somebody hasn't moved for a certain period of time. So if the accelerometer values stay very low or don't change at all for too long, indicating that maybe someone has fallen and hasn't been able to move. And again, you can even use radio communication with other micro bits to send messages to them. So lots and lots of options. You can go through more of the microbit tutorials and read some of the instructions on our website and linked in the description below this video to get started doing some of those and designing your own custom fall detector. For instructions for over a thousand other projects in all areas of science and engineering, not just electronics and programming, check out the rest of our YouTube channel and our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.